The Wapping Strike of 1986 was one of the most important political events of the 1980s, and arguably one of the most important political events of an entire generation. Many say this was Rupert Murdoch's ultimate political victory, and it enabled him to become the global media power that he is today. In 1986, he already owned four papers in the UK, but at one stroke, he forced his journalists to join him or be sacked. He cut costs, and he ultimately broke the power of the unions. From this basis, he was able to acquire serious wealth, enough to buy 20th Century Fox and found B Sky B and the Fox News Network. TV is now where his real sources of power and income lie. Murdoch framed the move to Wapping as one of technology and progress versus trade unionism and Luddites. New technology was clearly needed, but the workers were never consulted, and a leaked letter shows that Murdoch never intended to work with the printers to manage the transition. He seemed interested only in breaking the union and sacking the printers. Another question that is rarely asked in these situations is whether the workers could have shared in the benefits of the new technology, maintaining the same wages but working fewer hours instead. The question should be, as workers build wealth, why can they not share in the rewards of greater efficiency? As automation increases in the 21st century, this is a pertinent question for our generation. One question that has been asked again and again is why did the unions fail? One of the main causes was three big anti-union laws that Margaret Thatcher passed prior to 1986. This made it harder for other unions to support the printers' union. In these circumstances, it was noted the TUC failed to act in support and defy these anti-trade union laws. Also, the Scab Electricians' Union, the EETPU, may have had some disputes with the printers' union prior to the dispute, and this may have made it easier to break the union. The Thatcher government did everything they could to support Murdoch. Police attacked not only strikers, but local residents who were seen as sympathetic to the strikers. The police were also caught lying about what happened on the picket lines. Metropolitan police officers concocted evidence after riots at the Wapping newspaper plant four years ago. The print workers found out Murdoch had conspired to sack them and break the union rather than negotiate. The leaked letter showed this. He was planning to have letters hand-delivered to their homes, offering them a £2,000 bribe or the sack. Despite getting early warning through the leaked letter, very few NUJ members decided to join the strike in solidarity. The NUJ is now no longer recognised at News International. Despite the uncovering of the Murdoch-led 20-year hacking scandal, Murdoch is back in the powerful's good graces again. This year saw David Cameron and half his cabinet attend Rupert Murdoch's Christmas party. Now the question to be asked is, what does the future hold for Murdoch in Britain? Can he hold on to his papers despite them losing money? Can he take full control of B Sky B and increase his already huge power in Britain? Can he destroy his arch enemy, the BBC, and clear his way to total media dominance? <laughs>